Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. a seasoned creative director and brand strategist from Kiev, Ukraine, specializing in transforming SaaS products into standout brands by blending designs. Please welcome Bo Don Polinik. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Bada. Did I get that pronounced that right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Perfect, man. I'm, you know, this is, uh, folks, I got to tell you, uh, we're going to be talking about brand identity today and kind of go over some questions about that. But first, where are you calling in from? Where where are you at right now in the world? I want the I want the people to know first, where are you calling in from? Uh, first of all, I'm in Ukraine. And second of all, I'm in Kiev and capital. So, yeah. You know, I think folks need to understand this um, as what we see on the media isn't always uh, what cracks up to be because this gentleman's calling from Kiev right now. Everybody's saying that you know Kiev's under, you know, under it truly is right. You guys are in fact uh, in in a war, right? Um, but there are still individuals doing phenomenal work out of this location, trying to help support this local economy uh, continue to thrive. But before we get into all that, please introduce yourself. Give us a little background. Uh, who who is Bada? For sure. So basically, I'm a CEO and creative director at thecream.com, which is the cream design agency. We're doing a bunch of amazing stuff for the digital products, for the tech entrepreneurs, trying to revolutionize the game and actually bring some meaningful change. So that's very important to us. And yeah, we're uh, 35 creative heads that are just doing crazy stuff in branding, which means helping people elevate their brand, whether it's like brand identity itself, through websites, actually through design of the product itself. We also do creative explainers. So we go all in absolutely to leverage the meaningful tech. So it gets seen, it gets visible, it gets attention, it gets leverage it deserves. And it actually cuts through noise because I think this is one of the biggest challenges of the brands that they are all being very similar. But I think I will jump in to that later. But for me personally, I've been creative also like throughout my whole life. I've been doing comedy. I've been doing filming and like editing music videos as well. Like as a director, I've been doing music. So I think uh, about the creative people, if you're creative, it is reflected in everything that you do. So creativity is a mindset. And then the tools you can pick, whether it's a design, whether it's uh, a video editing or whatever else. Again, it's about the mindset that you have. And I'm pretty sure all the folks that listen to the podcast also know it. And right, that creative ways of some kind, I get to enjoy that doing as my work daily. Yeah, you know, I think that's one thing I've... I'm trying to at least carve out, like, you know, shout out to Colin Landforce. He keeps sh- shooting me emails and saying, hey, man, just an hour of day of creating creativity, you know, spend creating, uh, get it posted, and, and the amount of traction you'll start to get from that. And so I'm really trying to dedicate at least an hour a day because one of the areas, in fact, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about this specifically. One of the areas I struggle with, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with, is their website specifically like sure. building a website. So let's let's talk about it. How do you make a killer website that's clear, communicative, and tells a story that converts? Yeah, it's about elements coming together in one cohesive thing that we actually call the website. And I believe this is the storefront of every single business entity in the world. Even if you think that your website is not generating you revenue, leads, or whatever, it is generating you reputation dividends, for example. So people get to know you through the website. Whenever they hear about your name, they go there and they see it. But unfortunately, a lot of people have it underlooked as well or over-engineered. And there is actually like, there are many troubles that people get with their website and there's really like very little that get it right from people who get it right. I think this is where we can break things down. For example, we can look at the Apple's website. I believe it's doing a tremendous, tremendously good work because again, it has clear copy. It is punchy copy. It is speaking your language. So they're not using some fantastic, like we're the best innovation of innovation happening to the world. And you cannot understand anything that the company is doing. So it's about being clear about being precise about being, about being concise at the same time. But 
punchy on the copy level. And then you have the visuals, which is the absolutely like different story, I believe. And this gets neglected in a way that people would just throw in some bunch of images just to have the atmosphere. And I believe this is not correct. And my favorite test of the website is translate your website to Japanese. If you still are able to understand what the storyline is about, what you're selling, then this way you understand that the visuals are actually doing some kind of work, right? And they're communicating the message itself. If it's just a bunch of like beautiful images, probably it's not working. So if you know about this power of imagery, and now again, we're only talking static imagery, there comes the videos into play where there can be explainers that can explain the value of why you're doing things you're doing, why your product is the best, and also like best possible scenario. For example, I can infinitely talk about how amazing the door lock is, but I can show you the video of what's inside of it and why does the key, the, the wrong key does not go through. And then you understand immediately, aha, uh -huh, this is how it works. But instead of me having to explain it in word, which is a burden, people are very cautious about how they spend every single second in the internet because there's just so much offering out there. So you have to carefully really like, as you said, like just before you were spending one time of your time of your life consciously dedicating it to creativity. When it comes to user's attention, it usually is counted in seconds and you have to really make every second of the in the impression count and then there's this third block that is called like the whole website experience itself so the the ux the interactivity part of it the way how it's put together because for example there would be some the bootstrap community as i call them they would prefer like some site builders for me personally i always feel a tiny difference between how the site builders behave and how the website that is customly engineered is behaving it is like very different look and feel as per me and people also feel it i believe as well because again entrepreneurs try to make things like very tangible even though website also has to do a lot with intangible things like associations the feeling that you have uh and overall like the emotion that you're getting from it it's either you trust the brand you get to know it better you're looking into it or you're looking at it as kind of sloppy and this is the impression that the folks might get that actually your business is sloppy because this is the again I, I'm thinking that the website is like the face so you kind of read a lot from it it's not the only thing right there's this speech and what you say but it is judged on looks oftentimes so especially if the website is super conversion driven like e-commerce you have to be absolutely like nailing it if it's not serving any direct conversion value you still have to care about it because it's your reputation, I believe, and it can generate indirect dividends in a big amount. So yeah, how to make it best, make, have a great copy, have great visuals, have great user experience. And probably if I didn't break these things down, it would sound like a basic advice. But now I think having a slightly deep, like more deep look into each of these things, you can get better what I'm saying by killer copy, visuals that work and nice engineering. You know, I love this because uh, I literally was bit, I feel like as an entrepreneur, you're constantly working on your website. You're constantly figuring out ways Absolutely. to improve it. And so folks that are listening, um, I have a Patreon account. I just want to let you know this. We have a Patreon account for $5 a month. You can actually watch these videos. So these podcast interviews, you can actually go watch them if you join the Patreon account. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you my website and I, I want you to critique it. So you folks, again, if you're, if you're listening and you want the opportunity, you can, in fact, watch these full videos on Patreon. Again, as little as $5 a month, you can watch all of these videos. So I'm going to share my screen with you, but on, I'm going to, I'm going to have you go ahead and critique it. Okay. we pulled For up sure. the shades of entrepreneurship website. Again, the shades of e.com. Very basic, right? A business education podcast interviewing inter uh, entrepreneurs. Now, the reason I have this is my paragraph one, because this is paragraph or headline one, right? So the first thing when Google's tracking it, I believe the way I'm, I'm taught, this is the first thing they're kind of looking at it, right? Mm -hmm. You want me to comment right now? Yes, I already please can. critique the crap. Okay, out so. All right. Uh, so actually, again, the people thinking like design critique or something is going to be like the way the colors feel. No, it's not about colors at all. Design is visual communication. So you're delivering a message through a visual format, which is placed in the web. That's what I'm going to actually break down right now. So hero section is always the, the most important because like a lot of people, not a lot, like I, to, according to my stats and what I see from analytics, like 80% of people still continue after the hero screen, but it usually is perceived as the, like the, the most killer thing that the first impression that the people have. 
So you're saying a business education podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. I like it. It's direct and it's like straight to the point. You can absolutely get the messaging. So this is uh, no mistake so far. It's amazing. On the right side, you have this big thing they call the shades of entrepreneurship, which I believe is your logo. Correct. Do you want to like stick your logo that much and give it that much attention, like half of the screen? I'm not sure what I would advise you to do is like, okay, what else can we fit in here to make the first impression like absolutely correct? So who are the people that you were interviewing? There are probably some bunch of the cool folks and recognizable folks that would get the trust to your brand. They'd be like, oh yeah, I know this guy. This is an interesting guy that he was interviewing. Or maybe add some credibility, like where you were featured. Maybe you were featured in a Forbes or maybe in some other uh, media, BBC or whatever else that people would know or people that care about your podcast would know it'd be also nice to understand because uh uh-huh okay this is not just just a guy who is doing this business education he has this certain credibility that adds to trust the next thing i believe that what makes your podcast great is you so i would not hesitate to place like your own image on the very hero screen why because again it creates a trust because i see the person that i'm going to be looking at people actually read a lot from the facial expressions as well so if you take a, like a nice picture of yourself being like absolutely friendly, I can already read way more information than the logo. We can still have the logo. It can be in the top left corner or everything else. And it's still going to be readable as a piece of information that you see, right? But then you're still using more advantages that you have is yourself. Then if you want to take it to level two, it'd be amazing if actually that was video of you speaking. Mm. So like I could instantly click a button and hear like, hey, this is me. Welcome to my website. You know, I teach like, and then you can get way more information than just the explanation that this is a business education podcast. You can open up about, you know, why you're doing it, who you're doing it for, what's inside of there. So you can already flush it out on the first screen without people even having to scroll because that's what what they're going to see. Like, okay, I see this is a real guy, a real person. He's looking nice. Uh, This is a compliment that goes to you, right? If it's a video, I can hear you speak and I can hear that you're smart straight off. And then you have this logos of where you were featured or something else that would add credibility of why people should care about your podcast, why they should listen to you. If it's not logos, there is different methods of how you can kind of leverage uh, and showcase what you got. Maybe, I don't know, you've been working for some great companies. Maybe you have some personal achievement, but just like some additional info that would let people understand where they are, why they should care about it, and then get their curiosity through this lens to explore more info that you're going to showcase like just down below. Yeah. So this is uh, primarily the, the the thing that I would say just straight off the, the thing. Like personally font, if you like it, great. If you don't like it, okay. Uh, even though I'm, again, I'm a designer and uh, art director, of course, and creative director. But in the end of the day, I really care about the messaging part. So like there's nothing wrong with the font. There's nothing wrong with the logo as well. Because, yeah, I think I can go on forever. But if there's something else to scroll on the start page, I'd happily. Okay, let's go about. All right. So we have this information. I believe on the left, these are the people that have been featured. Correct. But then, uh, yeah, it'd be super also nice, like maybe to kind of the faces themselves kind of tell me something. But if they would have some titles, I think that would also be more informative as for me. So like, okay, this is CEO of this company. This is CEO of this company. And this way I would get more context into who these people are. The thing about the websites, people usually hate reading. This is the paradigm that I always start the design with. People hate reading. They would read your heading, maybe. They would read a standalone piece of text if it's short. But usually, again, people care about themselves. They don't really, like, you know, it might hurt every own self but really people are selfish and they care about themselves so having to spend that much time reading like eight paragraphs of text it's either people that you already have to build connection with or have has some specific internet and again it also has a lot to do about how people actually ended up on your website is it like did they just google you up and you know kind of this was their journey or are they coming from your social media where they already kind of know you this also makes a situation different so your traffic source is also important in the way you construct the website, looking at the context. So let me try to read the message. I'm going to get closer to my screen. Shades of Entrepreneurship Podcast is a dynamic platform highlighting entrepreneurial journeys, offering business insights, education, valuable opportunities for learning to discover. But for instance, for success, I'm sure. Yeah, well, that explains the thing. So I think like there's nothing wrong or right with the copy. It's absolutely informative. 
the thing is, again, uh, I believe what it lacks is your special sauce. Mm. Like you definitely have some special sauce. Like, for example, if I take this text and I place it on some other podcaster's website that is doing the same kind of podcast, would it still work? I think it will work, work like almost 100%. Right. So I would try to kind of, you know, look deeper and find that special thing, what makes you special within this field of doing the educational kind of podcast. It can be found in the way of form of like the tone of voice itself, right? The shade of entrepreneurship like opens your shade, you know, kind of, I look into mm, dark sides yeah, of people yeah. to find some insight. Like that is coming more personal already if there is nothing more specific, because again, I would have to speak to, talk to you for like a couple of hours in order to kind of, find what's actually is making you special and I would happily do so. Maybe we will do, uh, you know, over some in the next episodes or something, but for now, yeah, I would be looking for just spe your special own unique sauce. So, but informative wise, I do like that. It, it is straightforward ex explaining what it's about, just the, the spice is that personality of yours that I would add here. I like and again, uh, about the people. And then let's talk about Patreon newsletter, you know, the show. Okay. Well, let's go to the Patreon block. I'm uh, go. Yeah. Into every single one of them. I love it. I don't know what's in your Patreon. I don't know. I don't see the value straight off. Like, why uh, okay. would I sign up? It's telling Patreon. It's telling me sign up. Okay. What I'm going to, you know, I, what I have to do is press another click, go to another platform, potentially log in. So, you know, invest a little bit of effort. I don't know what I'm getting in exchange for that. There's some copy about it. I can probably read it. There, but I, again, without reading copy, I might just guess that it's going to say that it has exclusive content that's going to help you pump up your skills. That's basically the message that has been like probably longer. Now, let me try to move in closer and see. Free space to connect with fans directly in place to grow the podcast as little as five per month. Better and exclusivity access to interviews along with other exclusive benefits. I will try to open up as much as possible. What benefits do they have? Like for now, it sounds abstract, just the benefits. What benefits? What specifically are you doing? Uh, you can get in touch with me directly and ask questions or, okay, that's that's kind of valuable. I'll put it out. Maybe you were saying, again, you have this like reviews of the websites. It'd be nice to have some kind of demo over there as well. Maybe just a little bit of it, just a piece of it to let people try. Because again, if you come back to Apple's websites, they like use their headphones in the best light possible. Their product is the website. Your product is right the subscription for the content. So your product is the content. So you want to kind of showcase your content as much as possible on the very first kind of storefront site, which is again the website. Even the marketing studies would show that when people get to experience the product before they purchase, which is trying, touching, playing around with it, if it's a physical product, the more the chances are that they're gonna kind of have it because the whole psychology of the purchase is that I'm giving away money and I'm for something in exchange. Right. And I want to know the value of it because get, giving away my money always activates the area in the brain that activates pain. So that is very like kind of subconsciously pain, painful feeling. So it really has to serve the value. So what you want to do is try to exaggerate or like not exaggerate, but make that value absolutely kind of visible and get the best out of it. So it'd be like, okay, yeah, this swing is making kind of sense for me. Right. Even though five dollars is not that much, of course we get that. But if you manage to kind of overweight the value thing, that you know it's five dollars not for just something, but for this specific thing, and I do like it, the chances are people are gonna buy it more. So yeah, well UX wise, there's the thing that CTA doesn't stand out, like sign up. I am a believer that people who are interested, they're gonna find a way to sign up. So making it red, making it huge, is not gonna make people click it you know kind of if they're not interested but at the same time if we talk mass scale so if you have ten thousand visitors yes there will be a lot of people who would kind of you know kind of not press this button and again as you don't have this value maybe if it was huge and red some people would just press it for the sake of it and then find something nice there already they, that might be the journey so if it's again mass traffic i would try to kind of get it more visible within this block but yeah uh, that's what i would do with this specific block perfect if you go to a newsletter one and one the same mistake pretty much similar to what i said before and it actually is 95 percent of cases of everybody so you're asking me to give my email this is quite personal i mean everybody's trying to get my email right 
like the, that girl from the bar, everybody's trying to get her number. Everybody's trying to get my email. And I know that when I input my email, I'm going to be bombed with messages. Like it's, uh, you know, we're living, living in 2023. It's obvious. So I am careful. And I think most, I, I'm pretty sure you are and all the visitors and the people who listen to the podcast, they would not give email that easily nowadays. They would need to also know that there's something waiting there that's going to be kind of you know, valuable. So I would also try to explain it. Maybe again, visuals are always the best. If you would show example of newsletter and I would actually think it's cool, I would probably do it or like just open up a little more what's waiting there. So like, Hey, it's just going to be two minute read, or it's going to be like an advanced 25 minute thing where you will find out on the, all the secrets in the world. That's already, uh, again, uh, some exchange of the value. Okay. For that, I am ready to invest my email and getting these things in right now. Just join. Okay. Not yeah, convincing yeah. enough as per, as per me. Again, there will be some people that are coming that know your background, that are absolutely interested even before they landed on the website. They might leave this. But if you want to increase the conversion, I would try to give a solid valid reason why they should give this email because this is something they also give out and invest from their side. Perfect. All right, folks. Now we're moving on to the shop, the products. And you got it right. You show the product. You can even like, you, you can see it clearly, you know what you're buying. It has the price tag on it. It has a, it has the button to buy. Like, and the design itself is kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, I think this is 10 out of 10. Perfect. Finally, we're getting there. Now my bio, the host. And, keep it simple, oh, keep it go. concise. It's, it, it's, yeah, let's see what it says. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it is again. Uh, I kind of I like like your style way more than again. There's a different styles. Some people will be just like throwing lots of fluff. Some people will keep it absolutely straight to the point. I like that it's straight to the point. But I would personally, again, as a non visitor, I would like to know a little bit more about you, not just your title, but you know who you are, the person. Why do you make this podcast? You know how did it all start? Something that is that will open up your personality a little more. And that would be for me something interesting because usually also human connect kind of, you know, to the stories a lot. That's also what we see, like stories would always help to sell anything and just get people interested because again, the movies that you see, like the most dramatic emotional experiences that would come from like movies and then the books and there's a story and people like to kind of fill in the gaps that they have, kind of imagine some things in their head. And then when this kind of aligns with what they think of life, generally then they're like okay yeah i'm interested this is something that resonates with me and again i'm pretty sure you have a lot of good reasons why you're doing it and why people would be absolutely benefiting from getting closer connection with you so yeah this is something that i would i would do over here perfect blog post okay so to me here the text might be a little redundant because blog post okay like what I get it's blog post and then like the value lies within this within the blog post itself. I don't need an extra explanation of why should I care about your blog post. It's either good or not. So I can see it precisely like from here. So to me, again, like redundancy is also important in kind of removing redundancy seems important to kind of have the attention in what you want them to see. You want them to see the blog and to see this valuable and only the blog post itself would make it valuable. Gotcha. Uh, regarding the views, not necessarily should, sure I would have them. Why? Because I'm not sure this number serves a kind of convincing reason. It, it has only three views, which makes me as a user like, oh, okay, not that many people read it. If you just hide it, it's going to be less of a kind of distraction because again, people, you know, kind of care about these things. So if you ask me about these tiny chances, if it would have like 50K views and that would serve your benefit, like it would be an additional reason to care about it. Okay, so many people read it. If there's less people, you want to just probably remove it just for the sake of, you know, kind of not going the direction and avoiding the risk of some people thinking like that's too little to me. I like because again, like the yeah. most of the people want to be a, a, a part of this mass, you know, kind of. And when there's when they see that they're alone, they try to hesitate. There's again lots of psychology about it. Why people want to belong to the group and like uh, it's a massive thing. Uh, the art of management, a key to entrepreneurial success. Um, I would also add a little bit more, like the, not just the heading. But the first sentences, this is what you would see like Forbes and others doing and getting people to click further because that's what you want them to do. They would be like using the clickbait title titles and then just short stories that you just want to press read more because, you know, you kind of got intrigued 
So using that space for like this one or two sentences that are is provoking the intrigue to actually go and click it because again, that's what you want to have. You want to have them continue their journey with you. So you want to kind of pull them as, as much as possible. So I would definitely like revisit, relook at the headings and maybe add the subheadings as well, just again, to have them more intrigued into going deeper. Uh, I do like that it says three minutes read because that is not a lot of my time. And I would be like absolutely affording three minutes to check it out. That's nice because if it was 20 minutes, that might be too much. But as I know, it's short and sweet. I am okay with kind of exploring it. Uh, the date is also nice having it, and I can see that you kind of, kind of consistently post on it and work on it. And also, to me, again, it forms an impression that you're consistent and people also feel it, I believe. Because again, if you don't take out your website, probably, I don't know what you do with your business. Maybe you're also sloppy like that to not care about it at all, because you should care about everything, right? It's your thing. And as I see that you're consistently doing effort, then I mean, you're really invested in what you're doing. and. To me, that would play a role. So yeah, I would see like, okay, this guy is updating. He's putting work into it. So I appreciate that. I would kind of consider. There's again, uh, there would be lots of people with different opinions, of course. And that's what the best that can happen is have them also kind of go through the thing that they see. But the thing is, unfortunately, a lot of people would tell you BS just to protect their ego, not to hurt you, right? Because I'm being like absolutely direct and I and I totally know that some of the things would not feel absolutely comfortable having your kind of website crashed. This is what you're here for. And I understand that you're yep. a super mature man that understands the value for sure. So I'm not hurting you. Hopefully. No, I'm free Fingers education, crossed. folks. Free education. Amazing. But there would be lots of people who try to show them, you know, kind of show themselves softer, would not feel so comfortable flushing it all out just like that. Or we try to find kind of some good things because it would be more about the personal connection with you, not roughly looking at the work and not abstracting it from your personality. So yeah, getting people to answer the right things is also like a huge science. But and then also like regarding this, I have a very interesting story. I was part of the focus group that was doing the research on the post service that we have in Ukraine, and then they showed this ad of this post service, which was was like a one minute video. And then all people said like, "Oh my god, I love it! This is such a great ad!" and you know, it's fantastic. But then I said, like, but you're part of the group right now. And of course, like, it's shot beautifully. But let me rephrase the question. If this was shown on YouTube, would you watch it till the end? Or would you hit the skip button the first thing, like, it pops up? And it totally changed the perspective of the answer. Like, yeah, kind of, you know, I would kind of, and I was like, okay, so now let's talk. Like, what would make it for you not skipping it. They're saying like, walk, and there's the conversation that starts to happen that actually serves the value. But again, the first hand question was like, do you like it? Yes, we love it. And then they start naming reasons why they love it, why it shows beautifully, how it kind of resembles the message that the post is fast and good and for these people. And I was like, I've been through a lot of these interviews. So I'm gonna tell you that they're lying right now and they might not even acknowledge it themselves because again, it's just the team dynamics, it's the personal psychology dynamics, and these things have to be counted when you ask for the opinion. But yeah, like you're doing the, the best thing possible. You're asking me to review it, and then there will be some other people who's going to say like lots of stuff about it, and then you can have the image of what kind of emotions everybody has. And that what branding initially is, coming back to the topic of the conversation, is the set of intangible emotions and associations that people have with your business. And how hard would, would you not try people are still going to have their own kind of emotions and associations based on their personal perception, experience, cultural thing, and background or anything. But what you can do with branding, being precise, having a clear brand strategy is get them to think as much as possible of yourself that you would like to showcase to make yourself kind of, if you, if it's, if you're talking personal branding, like your website, for example, right, you should showcase, you can showcase yourself as a, you know, everyday guy. It's like, I'm living the same life as you. So this is why you relate. You can show yourself as a super professional being as this suit and tie and saying like, I'm so smart that, you know, you want to listen to me. That's a, a totally different set of associations that we have. You might have it in a trashy design style where, you know, there's going to be like cows flying around and people are going to see like, <laughs> okay, this, like some people will say like, sorry, it's too much. But some people will say like, hey, he's, you know, kind of, he can laugh from himself. He's a kind of fine guy and he doesn't really care. And he's like this kind of guy. And this is the third vibe. And all these things, you know, kind of, and this also, they relate like who your potential customers are, what they care about, you know, kind of, are they like that super serious people? And this is like, I'm talking about this specific group because this is a bias because everybody wants to be like absolutely professional. Absolutely. But then again, 
sometimes it's seen as fake. Sometimes people would watch your podcast rather than like a recreation, rather than doing it on a full time, like nine to five schedule, like in the middle. So when they're pursuing the relaxation kind of thing, maybe, you know, kind of there's also can be some emotion that would support it. Like, hey, I know that you're going to watch this in the evening after you finish your work. And that's why I keep it short. Bam, you hit me hard. I relate. I'm like, you re- you read my thoughts. You are on the same page. And this is how I build connections with me. If you're trying to be cold, it's a different thing. So again, there's so many ways you can form your brand image from on the personal and corporate level. And you want to kind of, you know, build this image to serve what you're selling, to whom you're serving, how you're selling it, and these kind of things. You know, folks, I, I want to pull out a few nuggets right there. Because one, when we're talking about like brand strategy and brand and guidelines, we're not just talking about colors and images. And we're talking about everything, right? The font sizes, uh, how does certain images go on, what images you use, how do you want those images to look to, to you know, your point. Is it going to be the suit and tie or is it going to be the t-shirt look, right? Uh, I'm more, I, you know, I, I, my experience heavily has been in the corporate world for the last 22 years in the nonprofit healthcare kind of industry, you know, focusing on strategy, building brand guidelines, things of that nature. Now coming as an entrepreneur, it's very different. Uh, it's very, 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 di- it's similar in a lot of ways, but it's very different because when we're working in the corporate American, I'm fa- talking about healthcare. I'm talking like patient stories, right? Trying to pull out your heartstrings, trying to think about we're going to give you the best care possible. Now, I'm trying to do the same thing with my current brand, right? I'm trying to pull at your heartstrings, but I'm trying to pull out your heartstrings to pay me, right? To purchase an item, to subscribe to something, right? But I'm also providing value to your point. And I agree, you know, a lot of these things, especially adding a little bit of sentences to the blog post is, you know, to that little, that little hook, right? To draw you in. Um, and so that's, it's having an opportunity to folks listening have an opportunity to really ask somebody that's smarter and better than you in their profession is not a bad thing. Uh, don't take this criticism as like, oh man, I'm screwing up. No, nobody was perfect. And in fact, the last person that was perfect apparently walked on water, grow and learn from each other again calling in from Ukraine. I'm learning from across the world right now. I am trying to get better and better every day from other people who are better than me because they know how to do it. And I'm asking these questions because one, it's going to help me and it's going to help you. So I really do truly hope you take this opportunity to listen to what's uh, being said in these podcasts. If you have an opportunity to watch the videos, please do because it really does provide a good outline of what other entrepreneurs are doing, what success looks like, and really actually peeling back the onion and letting you see, hey, it's not just about the colors when it's talking about branding. It's not just about these pictures. It's actually about the font color, the spacing, the the what it makes people feel, right? That's that's your brand. You know, I talk to people about what's your value proposition. That's what your brand is. Your brand is your value proposition. When people think you, you talked about Apple constantly, right? And, and Nike is a great example too. Uh, their their kind of value proposition is they want everyone to feel like an athlete. They believe everybody's an athlete, and so they want everybody to feel like an athlete. When I was wearing the Nike Air Jordans, I'll stick my tongue out. I thought I can dunk it. I can't. But, you know, the feeling you have wearing those things. AT&T with their commercial recently talking about the airlines it has nothing to do with the phone, but they are getting into your feelings. How do you – everybody can relate to the airlines lying about us about costs, right? You see these hidden fees everywhere. Well, at and is just doing a job about pulling out and say, hey, we don't do that because everybody can relate to it. And I, I really love that. Now, as we're as you're building this brand, what's what's uh, what's kind of the next stages for you in your life? What are you what are you going to do? Where are you at in the next five years? Me in the next five years, we're expanding our company because we serve so much value and we want to use our strongest ties that we also discovered through the time to serve our own objectives. So we know that we do amazing branding, we do amazing product design, and we can make amazing websites and communicate about it. So what did we decide to do is to launch another sub brand for one of the services specifically, which is actually the product design outstaffing. So people can get the designers to work with them like absolutely easily on a gig basis, just pay for time, which simplifies the way that the problems that we had during this life cycle of people, you know, kind of wanting to have a designer, but it's taking too long. Sometimes it's too expensive. You cannot find the right one. And this thing, we kind of simplify this whole thing. And this is one of the services where we're going to brand it absolutely properly. So people can understand fully the value and not mix it with the main value prop. That's the first thing that we're going to do. The next thing that we're actually doing right now is actually a startup. 
also based on the problem that we have. We had people burning out at our company. They were working hard and they were just like burning out and they were leaving the company. Like it was not a huge thing, but you know, I care about every single person in my business a lot. And when the, some somebody valuable is leaving or just somebody is leaving, that kind of feels me as a manager with a feeling that, you know, kind of I underdid the job because it didn't provide something to this person to make him feel happy in a way because we can always like raise the salary, change the, we're very flexible with what we're doing right now. So the startup is about spotting the burnout, spotting the signs of people being not necessarily 100% happy as early as possible. Currently it's done through one-on-ones and just like monthly questionnaires, I would say. But what we want to have is like the app that would actually give you some notifications in two days, once in three days saying like, hey, how do you feel? Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you feeling productive? Uh, do you feel you're mentally okay? Because with the thing that is going in the in Ukraine and in the world as well, like there's more and more anxiety kicking in and all these people are telling that the mental health pandemic sort of thing is coming and it's around the corner and it gets more visible and gets more attention finally, thankfully. So again, the thing is, I want to get this information as well as possible so the person can understand like if he's having troubles because it's sometimes it's not even about having the honesty with yourself like admitting that you feel bad so i want to create this kind of system that's gonna we already actually did the mvp so we can understand that maybe i'm not feeling right and maybe there's something i can do about it before it gets too bad so this is the app that we want to build and again we're absolutely on track with building it so i think we should ship it early next year We've done lots of interviews as well with the, as you just did, we talked to a lot of HRs, asked them to crash it, like to destroy it fully and tell why it's the worst solution they've seen. And this is how the truth starts to pop up. And the, the way we did it was absolutely similar as well. We would show them the product and kind of extract, you know, the thinking. And with the product, it's slightly more complicated than with the website, because with the product, I would just show the app and say like, hey, book a meeting. And then I see them do it. I see them struggle. If I would ask, do you understand how to book a meeting? They would say yes. But then the amount of time it takes to so there's a whole science behind testing the prototypes so that's uh that we're doing design to grow to evolve to find our strong sides and get them out in the world as well so yeah working with major tech brands and doing some stuff that's just going to disrupt the market and get the visibility because again our mission is to inspire game changers which means to give that inspiration to the world where you see something like, ah, yeah, that kind of drove me. So you right, you now pulled up the AT&T commercial, for example. So this is something that had an impact on how you kind of continued your, your experience after you watched it because you brought it up. So it stayed in your brain. So it also, you had some conclusions about, aha, uh-huh, okay, so this is what I do with my life right, right now. Maybe it's on a minor level. Sometimes it can actually turn out to be a huge discovery that, sh- that is going to be coming from that little small thing that you saw. So this is what we're trying to build to, to create the inspiration for the people to be bringing this meaningful change and building good products that's going to serve the humanity, the ecology, and that kind of thing. So like this is what we're doing. And I'm very happy when the team of 30-something people right, can build something that is seen by 1 billion of people. And for some people, again, it might even change the course of their life. So we want to be bold. We want to be making the meaningful tech brands louder. And in the next five years, expanding it properly using the superpowers that we have. So again, the startup two agencies is going to be our holding that we're going to be growing and maybe there's going to be some more ideas popping. Um, I don't know, but focus on these three more, three things is going to be the, the primary thing. And this way I can also empower my people to grow and kind of they can also take on the responsibility that they feel better. So like somebody would be like, yeah, I totally feel the startup resonates with me so I can kind of rebalance it out. So I think it's also important to give people that are absolutely smart, absolutely talented and creative space to grow within the company in this way. So yeah, that's what I'm up to. Nice. Now quickly, how can folks get in contact with you? Yeah, it's the cream.com. It's our website. It, when you hit us up, I'm always in the loop of every communication. So I always know about it. It can be my LinkedIn, which is Bhadan Palajichuk, which might be hard to spell, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be some link out there. Yeah. But yeah, the cream.com is like the cream, but with a Q because it's for quality. Uh, this is how we I put like it up. It. The nice thing, but about quality. Thank you. Actually, I'm doing all the businesses with you. I like it. And don't forget, folks, if you want this information, I'll have it on the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter. You can sign up at theshadesofe.com. I'll make sure to add a little bit more description so you know exactly what you're getting for that newsletter as uh, we've been learning here today. Thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Learned so much information, folks. I hope you also enjoyed this. This is a please also, I'm going to have the contact information in the newsletter. They'll also be on our website. So if you want to reach out to uh, a, a Bodhan, you can. 
phenomenal, phenomenal conversation. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope everything's going well for you over in Ukraine, and I hope you and your people continue to sort of thrive over there and, and the economy continues to uh, get rebuilt by people like you and, and like-minded folks. Um, let me know how we can help you here in the States. Thank you so much for your time, folks listening at home. Please follow me at theshadesofe.com or at the Shades of E on the social social sites. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to The Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow The Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.